Hi there, I'm Maciej from Amistech and right now I've spent around a week with my MacBook Pro 14 and I wanted to share some of my impressions with you. Let's go! Okay, before we begin, I just wanted to give you some more context about me. I have been using Windows for almost 30 years now, both on my own and professionally, so I really know this operating system uh, very well. And this is also not my first MacBook. I've had a MacBook before and I was never really comfortable while using it. And I believe that I've made one big mistake. I always tried to make Mac OS do things that Windows did. And I believe that this was a wrong approach because right now I'm really trying to learn and embrace the, the Mac OS way of handling things. And I think I am on a good approach here. And I believe that the learning curve right now is not as steep as it was before. I am really enjoying this journey so far, but how is the laptop itself? Well, let's begin with hardware. Uh, I have the basic model, MacBook Pro 14, which is M1 Pro, 8 cores, 14 graphic cores, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD. This is already a very powerful device and I think that it's quite an overkill for what I'm using it right now. But I must say that the build quality is really perfect. Right now I'm also using a Dell XPS 14 2021 laptop and I always thought that build and design wise it's, it's really nice. But compared to the MacBook, um, really uh, not, not so much. Uh, the overall feel is really premium. The build quality is astounding and I really believe that the shape that those devices have right now, not the wedge shape that we've been uh, used to for the past couple of years, but the more boxy and pro shape really hits the spot and I love the design of this device. And one of the first things that really got to me at, even at the beginning was how this device operates. I have yet to hear the fans on it really. I have not been doing crazy demanding stuff but I've already uh, created some videos, I've exported some videos on it and just yesterday I was texting my friend that this is crazy because I am exporting a few minutes long video and the fans didn't even turn on. And just to compare the Dell on which I've tried to do some video editing before I bought the MacBook was just dying uh, simply while trying to operate the timeline and not, not even uh, getting into the render part of it. So the way it works in every, pretty much every day-to-day -day task you can throw at it is really satisfying. And while we're talking about quality, we cannot forget about the screen. I mean, this is the best screen of all the devices that I ever owned and um, the sharpness the quality, the lighting that it has are really satisfying to use. And uh, to be honest, I hardly even collect my external monitor right now because of the sheer quality that this display offers. And I will address the elephant in the room, the notch. The notch is a total non-issue. Really, you don't even notice it um, in your day-to-day -day usage. So there is a lot of people saying that, yeah, the devices look great, but the notch would stop me from buying it. This is bullshit and um, not something that you focus on. You focus on the whole screen that you have in front of your eyes and not just the small part on the top of the screen. And the last thing hardware-wise I wanted to talk about is the battery. I must say that I was expecting a bit more, around 10, maybe 11 hours of use, but uh, my experience right now tells me that 7 or 8 hours are more realistic number that uh, you're going to get. Uh, but I have to say one thing, if you would really like to stick to Apple-made apps like Safari or Apple Music, I think that you would be able to squeeze much more from this device because I have already seen that those are the best optimized apps that you can have right now on this device. But still, even six to seven hours of really constant use is a great number, uh, especially given the fact that I have been playing some videos, listening to music, or even done some quick editing in DaVinci. And yeah, I think that overall the battery performance is really great. And yeah, I'm sure that you have noticed that I have not set 
anything bad about the hardware because there is nothing to say. Hardware-wise, this device is really fantastic. But when it comes to software, um, it is a slightly different story. And I know, I know my Windows way of thinking might be getting in the way right now, but there are some things that really bug me within the macOS. First of them being the something that I already mentioned, the Apple made apps. I mean like Safari. You can deny it's fast. It's nice to look at, the, the design is really uh, pleasant, but sometimes the way it works, <laughs> I mean, I really tried to switch to Safari, but I don't believe that I'll be able to. I think I will just use it as a browser that uh, I will refer to whenever I really need to squeeze the maximal amount of uh, usage before I'll be able to plug it back. But with my day-to-day -day usage, day-to-day -day tasks, I believe I'll stay with Opera browser. The next thing that bugged me a bit is the scaling. I know this is Retina display and I know that macOS looks best on the Apple specific uh, resolutions, but I really see the difference of picture quality when I connected the same external monitor to my Dell and when I connected the same monitor to the MacBook. On Dell, the picture is much clearer, is uh, very pleasant to be honest, but whenever I connected the same display, to the MacBook, it's always kind of dizzy, always not so sharp as it's supposed to be, and there are ways to deal with it. Uh, one of them being the Better Monitor, the app that you can install and just play around with different specific resolutions. But you shouldn't be forced to use external apps to make your pretty big 27 inch 1440p display look good. It should be something that looks good right by default. and. Um, I know you can always buy the Mac Studio display, but I don't believe that the price that they are asking is fair uh, for a 60 Hz display. And another thing that really struck me was how much third party apps I had to install to make this OS perform the way I would like it to. I mean, macOS is considered to be a really user-friendly operating system, but I think that in many ways it's really lacking compared to Windows, for example. I was not able to control the brightness or scaling, as I said before, on of my external display. I was not able to control the volume on my mini hi-fi audio system, which is like really crazy. I was perfectly able to do it on every other device that I used before. If you want to be able to snap your application windows around the screen, you have to install third-party app. You have to install third-party app if you want to use a clipboard history, which should, in my opinion, be integrated in the operating system. And I believe that the most crazy thing is the lack of configuration for the touchpad and mouse. You have all the crazy and very useful gestures that you can use within the OS, but you cannot configure a free finger tab that should, for example, open the link in the background tab. You have to install a third party app for that, or you are not able to set the scroll on your mouse or on the trackpad work in the same expected behavior, you still have to install a third-party app for that. And maybe one overall thought, the keyboard shortcuts are really twisting your fingers. I mean, command, control, alt, shift and the letter at the same time, come on, who does that? And yeah, I almost forgot one last thing. Uh, I don't know with which operating system version this came in, but you can set in the settings how long or how short you have to press your key for the letters to start repeating uh, themselves. Right now it doesn't work, it just shows you like an iOS dialect symbols menu, which is crazy. I mean, this is a desktop operating system, not a mobile one. And I would maybe understand this a bit more if MacBooks have a touch screen, but we all know this is not going to happen, so I don't really understand this decision. And you have to use the, your terminal with a proper command to disable this and go back to the standard key press and repeat symbols function. But yeah, I've said some good things, so not some good things, but I believe that overall I am really impressed by the difference of experience you get from switching from x86 to ARM-based laptop, and I believe that I'll be pretty happy with this device long term. Who knows, maybe I'll come back to you in a few months to see how it all went. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, please leave a like and subscribe if you have anything to add to this video or maybe you would have any constructive feedback, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you next time.